All right, guys, I wanted to do kind of a short how-to video, so we are still waiting on the control rod to come in to finish the rudder project. So let's talk a little bit about rivets. There was a lot of discussion in the comments about rivets, types of rivets, the technique to rivet, um, blind rivets versus solid rivets. There's a lot of different discussion going on, and so I thought we could slow down and talk about the whole subject here. So first of all, uh, to do blind riveting, which is what Sonics is primarily uh, utilizing, I would go ahead and get yourself at least a hand puller. You don't necessarily need an air compressor one for a small project. Um, you need to have a couple of Clico clamps, obviously Clicos and rivets. This is a deburring tool. Um, this particular one is by Shaviv. It's really good. Um, it has a nice V-shaped double cutter, which does insides and outsides. To remove these things, you're gonna need a punch and a drill, one eighth drill bit for these ones. This is a center punch, which can be useful for helping to start some of your drilling. This is an edge deburring tool. And then this is an offset riveting tool that allows you to get tight into corners where you can actually change the angle of your riveting tool. So we've got some leftover pieces that I cut off the original rotor, as well as extra pieces from the rotor that we just built. And I thought I would use this to go ahead and show you the whole technique from start to finish. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do after you cut your metal is you want to deburr the edges. You wanna make sure those are not sharp. You wanna make sure they're flat. Um, in this one's case, there was just a little bit of a bow to it. So you probably wanna get it on the belt grinder and actually make it nice and smooth. But if it's just a simple burr, this little double bevel deburring tool, you just scrape it right along the edge and it peels that aluminum off pretty reliably. It gives you a nice smooth edge. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fit this end rib in here. I'm gonna do it with the inside facing out so that you can actually see everything. Now it's already got some holes in it, but we're gonna to have to drill some new holes. So one of the ways you could start, if you wanted to use the hand drillers, you could use something like a center punch. And a center punch will give you a nice little dimple right there that you can start your drill bit with. And that'll hold your drill bit pretty steady. So we'll go ahead and take our drill bit and we should be able to drill right through. Just like that. Now, you may want to be a little more precise. You may want to use a drill press. That's your call depending on the piece that you're working on. But for a demonstration, that works just fine. After you drill your hole, on the inside and outside of both pieces, you're going to have a burr. It's something that you can run your finger across and feel it. Be careful, it's sharp. But on both of those, there is a burr, and that burr will keep the pieces from being completely flushed together. It can also induce cracks if you don't remove it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our deburring tool. And the Shaviv tool works really good because it can do the inside and the outside at the same time. So what you do is you just stick it in the hole and literally just go around. And as you do that, you can kind of see little bits of metal coming off. And so both sides are smooth. Now I'll give you a really good example. So you can see this where it's painted right here. If we take this and we reach through, you can see what it'll do to the back side. It'll actually peel the paint and you can see the little piece of metal coming off there. So that is an excellent little deburring tool. We've done both inside and outside on that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this together. And we'll drill a couple more here. You can see that that leaves a little bit of a dimple there. So be careful on thin sheet metal. Now this one has another piece of metal behind it and I was supporting it with my fingers. You might want to use a block or something to support it even further, but a drill press would also be helpful in these scenarios. So we're gonna drill those. And we'll go ahead and clico those together. Now what I'm gonna do is go all the way around this piece and then we'll come back and clean everything. All right, so the general sequence that you're gonna go in is you're gonna punch and drill or use the drill pest and drill. You're gonna go ahead and click all your pieces together. You make sure you like the fit. Once you're sure that you like the fit, then you can go ahead and remove everything, go ahead and deburr everything, and then you'll put it back together and rivet. I did wanna show you how these Clicos work. They're kinda of neat. So the Clico clamp reaches across and basically pulls the two pieces together. 
and they go in and out. They're very easy and very handy to use. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take all these Clecos out and we're gonna deburr everything. So once everything has been cleaned up, deburred, clamped together, everything is fitting well, and then it's time to go ahead and rivet. So we're gonna remove our Clecos. Your hole should be nice and clean. The fit should be relatively snug, but it should go in. When you're using your hand tool, you wanna make sure you're using the correct size nozzle. And you wanna make sure as you start to pull that everything is square to the piece. And it should take two good pulls. All right. And so we'll go all the way around and keep doing that. And so that's just a simple demonstration of how you would install rivets in an end rib. And so what I wanna show you is what it looks like from the back side. Now you can see a little bit of a burr there because I didn't go around and deburr all of these things for the demonstration. So that is potentially problematic. You wanna have it look nice and clean like this one here. Same thing on the back side, nice and clean. A little bit of a burr right there. So these things are, they're hidden. You're never gonna see them if you don't go ahead and deburr them. So you need to go ahead and do that. And then probably just as important as putting rivets in is how do you get them out? Well, to get them out, you're gonna to wanna to use a drill bit, usually the same size as the rivet that you've got here. In this case, it's a 1 8. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill off the head. And you wanna make sure you don't stray one way or another. Sometimes these wanna walk. Okay, so right there, that head wants to come off. And what I'm gonna do here is actually just pop it off. All right, so by doing it that way, you're not increasing the size of the hole. The next thing I'm gonna do, because the butt end is still in there, is I'm gonna take a smaller punch and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it out, just like that. So now we have the same hole. We haven't made it any bigger. We don't have to use a bigger rivet. So the last thing I wanted to show you was this little offset tool. So sometimes you're gonna get into a situation where you've gotta put in a rivet, but you've got an obstacle like another piece of metal and that doesn't allow you to get your rivet gun straight. So this has about a 10 degree angle to it and you sit this over top of your rivet and then when you put your hand puller on it, it'll pull the rivet in straight despite the fact that you're actually coming in at an angle. If you don't use something like this, what you might get is a rivet that sits off um, and it's not flush. I had that happen a couple of times when I was first trying to do this and so this tool has made that a non-issue. All right, so the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about real quick is blind rivets versus pop rivets versus solid rivets. Now, pop rivet and blind rivet are kind of synonymous, but in aviation, we don't really like to use the word pop rivet. And the reason is this, when you talk about pop rivets, what you're talking about are these cheap little aluminum rivets that you get at Lowe's. These things are weak, these things will fail. These are not made for airplanes, okay? So don't use these in airplanes. But that's not what Sonics uses, that's not what Zenith uses, that's not what the new RV-15 uses. So what we're talking about is CCP cherry rivets. These are blind rivets, they are stainless steel. These rivets are very strong and they're designed for specific applications that they're used for. So when they design an airplane, they figure out how much stress is going to be in a particular area and they figure out what fasteners need to go there. This is not done you know, willy-nilly they pick the right fastener for the right job. And so there is nothing wrong with using blind rivets. They're very strong, they are easy to put in. Uh, in certain applications, you have to use them. But to say that the blind rivet itself is the cause of any sort of a failure or that it's a low quality airplane because it uses these is just not true. Um, blind rivets are frequently used in aviation. These are aircraft grade, and I would feel very comfortable using these all day long. If we go back to the original failure on my rudder, it wasn't the rivets that failed. So the rivets were fully intact. What failed was the metal the rivets were in, and that was because of some unusual stresses on the rudder. So um, this was not the cause of the failure, and we just need to keep that in mind when we're talking about pop rivets. These are not your typical pop rivets. Well guys, I hope this little intro into riveting was somewhat helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. If you have any comments about what we're doing right or wrong here, please let us know. Hope you guys have a great day and fly safe.